Well, there's a change. Hallelujah. I was going to go one direction. I've changed. So, uh, praise God. Go ahead and open your Bibles into uh, Genesis, uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. We're going to, we're going to talk about prosperity. I, we're, just, we're, going, we're going to defeat the uh, spirit of the world and the spirit of poverty that's on our country right now. Uh, and, and, and listen, part of what's going on right now is designed by evil men. They deliberately are doing what they're doing to destroy the American economy because they want to make it a socialist country. There's, that's, just, that's just flat out the truth. It is designed by people in political leadership who want to make this a socialist country. You know, and I'm talking, I ain't talking about one party or the other, but there's people in both parties who, because they're, they're going, because understand, in any socialist country, communist country, Marxist, Leninist, whatever, whatever they feed the people, the fact is the people in charge get rich. The people in Russia, the leaders of Russia were rich. The, the people in, the, in, their, in their, whatever they call that, that their, 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 their ruling party, were rich. They were rich people. Their athletes were rich. And you go into other countries, the, the, you know, the leaders are rich. The, you know, but they sell the, the utopia to the people that they're all going to be equal in heaven. And, and I, look, I went to communist countries right after the fall. The, it wasn't good for the regular people. The people, who, the people who worked the factories in the eighth grade were told where they were gonna, what they were going to do for the rest of their life and all that kind of stuff. It was not good. I've traveled those countries. I've seen the results of it. I saw the wonderful, glorious buildings that they built with all that stuff, and they were, they were run-down shanties in 10, 15 years. Uh, I went to the, um, uh, when I first went to Estonia in 90, 93, February of 93, Many of you remember the 80 Olympics. We, we boycotted the 80 Olympics. Remember that? Anybody remember that? Um, <clears throat> because of Russia's involvement in Afghanistan. And we boycotted. Carter, Carter was the president at the time. And uh, we boycotted those Olympics and did not go. And, um, and so, that's right, because the election was 80. Reagan took office in 81. Carter, Carter boycotted those Olympics. And so, you know, we didn't get go and so forth. But, um, when I was in Tallinn, Estonia, Tallinn obviously was part of the Soviet Union at the time, and the, the yacht races, the sculling, and all that st stuff took place in Tallinn Bay, right there in the, in the city of Tallinn. It's a big bay there, and that's where the, they were. And, and the hotel there, was on the, the Parita, um, was right there on the bay, and I stayed in that hotel. Now, this was 93. This is 13 years after being built. Wonderful, glorious communism. How wonderful it is. The hotel was a dump in 13 years. The doors, you sit there and go to bed, on the, on, on, and the wind coming off the Tallinn Bay would just blow in all around the doors. I had two downfield comforters and two space heaters in the room because the heat from the hotel didn't work. They, they brought me two space heaters to plug into the wall to try to get it warm enough not to freeze. Yeah, just, you know, just 13 years after their magnificent building. Now, that hotel, eventually what happened was uh, the Finns and the Swedes came in after the fall of communism and gutted and refurbished that hotel. It's a nice place now. But uh, it wasn't the first time I went because it was typical stuff. Now, look, there is stuff going on in our country. There is the, the day of just being able to go out and make it on, on your own in our country, is right, as of right now, is a difficult thing. Okay? It's because there are, there are powers that be that are working against it. They don't, and, and listen, you understand this. Part of this is, uh, not part of it, it's, it's Satan's behind all of it. And one reason he's behind all of it is 90% of world's mission money came out of America. What's he want to do? He wants to cut off that flow. If you can't put gas in your car, you can't, you, you're, you're, we have to support missionaries. The church is hurting. The churches all over America are shutting the doors. <coughs> they, can't, they can't afford to stay in business because there's no money coming because people don't have money. Well, we, we can't combat that by whining. We can't combat that by complaining. I'm just giving you a state of what's going on around us and what we're going to have to do about it. If we're going to win, if we're going to defeat it, and how many were here Wednesday night? How many weren't here Wednesday night? Go back and listen to it on the Internet. Kevin had a word for the church, and I believe it was the Holy Ghost. It's a new anointing for a new harvest. Hallelujah. You know, we're, you know, we're, we're, not, going to live, we're not going to live in that, that, uh, that funk of, you know, depression. And not, let, let me tell you something. When stuff gets on a country... And this, I'm telling you, there are, there are evil designs taking place right now by men. Evil men are waxing worse and worse. There are world powers. There are men in control of finances around the world. I don't know if y'all know this. How many of you have ever heard the name George Soros? 
About 10 years ago, Soros was forbidden by the Soviet Union or by the Russians from investing in their stock markets because he could manipulate them so much with his wealth. He has so much money and he's able to manipulate the stock markets so much they wouldn't let him invest in their stock markets. He does it to American stock markets all the time. You can shift, uh, a ten, you can have a 10 cent shift in, in, natu- in oil prices or I mean gas prices and, and make millions or, or lose millions of dollars in our country. There are evil men around the world. Don't think that the one world government is not being established at this point in time. We're living in the end times. Now, I'm not saying this to make, put, you a, make, put you in fear and get you afraid, but we've got to stop looking at things in the microcosm of, I, I, want, I want somebody to give me something else. We've got to start looking at this in the, in, the event, in, in, in the scheme of world events and world and end times and that things are going on around us that, that is orchestrated by the devil to bring us to our needs to destroy us. Because who, have you all noticed what, who, who's getting more and more bold against what country? Everybody's getting more and more bold against Israel. Even our nation is now beginning to, to withdraw from our, from our leadership in our country right now to withhold their support of Israel. Hello, church. Well, I support them in doing that. Oh, really? I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. You don't want to be on the cursing side of Israel. Well, that was natural Israel. Let me tell you something. God, you go read your Bible. I'm not an end times preacher, but I'm over here. Let's go for it. Did the Bible not say that if God was able to graft in a wild olive branch, how much more would he be able to graft in the natural branch? Didn't he say that? Where did he say that? In the Old or New Testament? New Testament. God has a plan for natural Israel. See, God has a covenant with Abraham with natural Israel, and he has a covenant with Abraham for spiritual Israel. We're spiritual Israel. But he still honors his covenant with Israel as far as Abraham is concerned on natural Israel. That's why they were returned to their homeland. Amen? And uh, you go back and study your history. That land was never Palestinian. It was never Palestinian. That came out of a 1935 accord with the the English and the, the Germans and all kinds of stuff. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you, and the ancestral uh, lineage of the Palestinians are the Philistines. Everybody thinks, well, we've got to give the Palestinians a uh, Listen, let all those other Arab countries put them on a little piece of land there somewhere in their countries. They, 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 listen, everybody's coming out against Israel. Iran is determined to, they have a goal of absolutely eliminating the nation of Israel. If they have to nuke the whole place, they want to kill them all. There's a lot of stuff going on in end times. And we always kind of wonder where America was going to be. I'm telling you, 20 years ago, I would have never thought we'd have had a president in our country stand against Israel. Or leaders in our Congress stand against Israel. And it's taking place now. Things are being done against Israel. I'll bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. Now, all that being said, the, the, the finances of this nation have been grossly affected. Amen. We're still paying three dollars. I mean, we get excited when we see gas at three fifteen a gallon. Are you here? When this administration, I'm, I'm not, I'm not against administration. I just want to tell you, when this administration took office, it was a dollar eighty seven a gallon. It's three fifteen a gallon. It's been up as high as three eighty nine, three eighty four, uh, three ninety four, or whatever a gallon. I think about a year ago, it got up almost to four dollars a gallon. Now, folks. I remember not that too long ago, about, you know, when we were living in Greensboro, I was pulling up to the gas pump and paying 89 cents a gallon. I'd fill my tank up for $16. I still fill that same tank up today for about $60. So that's affecting what? It's affecting your gas tank. You know what that affects your food prices? That affects the shipping of food. Have you noticed food's gone up in the grocery store? I was just talking about we can go to McDonald's and spend $12 on two meals at McDonald's. How do you know? Well, the other night, Shannon came home. We, were, we, we didn't really have anything to cook. It was, it was this kind of time of day where it was an odd time. and She was starving. And she kept going, I'm hungry. Well, baby, I'm hungry. I mean, everybody had 30 seconds. I'm hungry. I thought, okay, let's go to McDonald's. She got little reconstituted nuggets. And I got a Big Mac. 
$13. And we didn't supersize it either. Because I could go back and get all the drink I wanted, you know. Just walk over there. Just kept the regular size. $13 at Mickey D's. Wonder meat and reconstituted chicken. That is sad. What now? And ramen noodles are up to 29 cents a pack. I used to eat at the original Hardee's in Greenville. The very first, I mean the original building, the original owner, original guy working in there, used to eat there for a dime for a burger. A dime and a drink, a, a drink and a, and, a, and a burger for 15 cents. They were good. They hurry, hurry on down to Hardee's with the burgers of charcoal broiled. Yep. What am I saying? There's a lot of stuff going on. You're bombarded by the economy, you know? I mean, you know, they, they, somebody comes out and says, all oh, the employment's down. Listen to me, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm painting the picture. Just hold on. Because we all know this. Let's talk about it. Unemployment's down to 7.3%. Unemployment's only down to 7.3% because another 950,000 people left the workforce last month. What's that mean? They're not counted in the figures. We now have 42.9 million unemployed adults in America. Not, not part-time unemployed. No, actually, I'm sorry, 90 million. 90 million. One-third of the country, adults, are not employed part-time or full-time. There are more people on government programs than there are working full-time jobs in this country. So where are you not going to see relief come from? The natural. The government, the natural, there's no relief in government. I mean, people go out to look for jobs, and people don't want to hire anybody over 29 hours a week. Why? Because they don't want to pay the, health, the, the Obamacare health insurance. We have people in our church, their insurance is going up from $500 to $2,400 a month, from $57 a month to $200 a month. There's a lot of stuff going on. We have people saying things like, we never promised you you could keep your insurance. <laughs> when there's 29 in meetings where they were recorded saying it. No, we only promised that if your insurance was uh, the same as it was after the law was passed, you could keep it. As, as, as of this, the, the latest report, 42.9 million people will lose their health insurance. So you've got people who are going to lose their health insurance, people who are losing their jobs, people who are losing this. The economy, things going on around us is bad. Now, I'm just re rehearsing to you so you understand, I understand, and I'm not going to speak pie-in-the-sky stuff to you not knowing what we're talking about. When you look around, and all the promises, these are all designed for one thing, to destroy the economy and bring it into a socialist state. Looking for statism. Okay? It is designed this way. It is on purpose. Evil men are working in, the, in that realm because they are going to get rich. There are going to be people who get excessively rich out of the poverty of the nation. Now, that being said, and you look out there and you see that, and you hear that, and you're seeing reports about that, and you're being rehearsed before you, and Pastor Ed comes in and talks about it. What are we going to do? We are going to look at this circumstance and say, I have another answer I can turn to. You, you cannot turn to the government. We are $17 trillion in debt as a nation. I did not say billion. I said trillion. I believe when the current administration took office, we were $8 trillion or $7 trillion in debt. We are now $17 trillion in debt. We are losing our credit rating around the world. Can't buy, you can't, we can't borrow. We're, we're printing money. And, and let me tell you, keep, what, 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 keep them printing money. Keep them printing money. Eventually, you become a fiat currency, meaning there's no support for that currency anywhere. It just becomes worthless. When I went to Italy, Italy ended up with a fiat currency. Even in the, in the, in the 90s when I went to Italy and preached, my hotel bill. You want to hear what my hotel bill was? Anybody want to hear what it was? I went in there, and, and I liked to fell out on the floor when I saw the bill. Because they handed me the bill, you know, uh, your mind doesn't, doesn't read currency exchanges. It sees numbers. 1,163,000 and some odd lire. When you see numbers and commas, 
in sets of threes for a hotel bill, it can mess with you. Multiple sets of threes. 1,163,000 lire. Now, that ended up being about $150. When you, but when you first look at that, now think about that now. See, in their currency, can you imagine going, you're going to go to the hotel as an Italian and you've got to pay a million lire to stay in the hotel? In their currency. When I went to Estonia for the first time, I, um, I bought a Russian tea set for myself, for Janie. And we still have it in our home. It, still, it said made in the USSR because they had just come out of communism. And I paid, um, I forgot, like 700, 900 kroon. That was, a, that was the average Estonian's salary for the month. I paid $58. Their average salary. They, they're making 900 kroon, but in American money, they, if they come to America, they could only get $58 for that, for a whole month's salary. Now, things in the natural are bad. Things in the natural are bad. But you know what? We have a place to go. We don't have to sit here and waller in misery and waller in despair and be full of... And if, you don't go, if, you're not, if you don't do what I'm going to tell you today, you, you're going to be in despair. Amen? We cannot afford to start acting like the world. This report came out the other day. All the rich people are hoarding their money. They're not spending their money. They're, they're hiding it. They're exchanging it. They're putting it in overseas accounts. They're transferring it into gold or other precious metals because they know that the dollar's in trouble. We've been buying the euro. Guess what? The euro's in big trouble. It's, it's being artificially propped up, but if it falls, America has bought up hundreds of billions, billions of dollars of euros. If it collapses, which it's, it's basically on the verge of, it's just it's like the world market economy is trying to uphold it because they know if it, flaw, if it falls or if the dollar falls right now, it's big trouble in the world markets. Okay? But, so the, the, don't, but we cannot respond by acting like the world and hoarding up things. Amen? And deny, denying doing what we're supposed to do. Are you all depressed yet? Good. All right. We're not going to stay depressed. All right? We're coming out. So, now, if this is the world state, understand that <clears throat> there are things that God spoke at different times through the Bible when economies were bad, when things were bad, when Israel was in bondage and captivity and so forth, and God still spoke faith over their lives. Amen. Amen. God still spoke these things. And um, so throughout his word, he's, he's got a covenant with us, and, in, and he wants his people to have a surplus of prosperity. God will bless you even in famine. Folks, we're in famine. I'm just going to tell you flat out, we are in famine. I don't believe it. Go talk to some people. Maybe, maybe you're in a situation where your job hadn't been affected, or your company hadn't been affected, but there's a bunch of people who have. Bunch of people who have. And so we understand there's famine around us. But look at Deuteronomy 28.12. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Hey, hey, hey. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. Deuteronomy 28. Let's read verse 1 first. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that I, the Lord shall set thee high above all the earth, and all these blessings shall overtake thee. Verse 12. The Lord shall open unto his good treasure. The heaven to give rain into thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thy hand. Thou shalt lend to many nations and not borrow. Or lend, yeah, lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow. God has given us a promise of prosperity. Amen. I said God has given us a promise of prosperity. Amen. Yeah, but you just don't understand. There's no money out there. God has given us a promise of prosperity. Where is it going to come from? He said he's going to open the treasure of open the heavens, uh, the, the good treasure of heaven, amen, and give rain unto thy land. That's, that's causing you to bring forth harvest. Now, one thing you cannot afford to do because it's tough is stop giving. Why? Because he's going to pour his rain out to give you a harvest. No seed, no harvest. But it's tough, Pastor. It's, yeah, listen, don't you ain't telling me nothing. I said, you ain't telling me nothing. I know exactly. I'm, I'm living it with you. It's tough out there. 
But he said he's going to give me rain in the season. Amen. To bless the work of my hand. And I'm going to lend and not borrow. That's what he said. <clears throat> we got to start looking back to the word of God. We got to start looking back to the promises of God. We got to start looking back that God is faithful. We got to start looking back to the fact that God will honor his word and honor your faith, your acts of faith. And he will do what he said he would do. See, it was easy when the economy was cooking with gas. Back before the dot-com bubble, everybody had money just floating out of their ears. I mean, you could get, a, you could get a, a full-time job at McDonald's making enough money to live off of. You know what? I mean, now people, they don't, they don't hire people above minimum wage. Now They want to hire them at minimum wage. And they don't even want to do that. They want to find a workaround on that. You know? They want to work your minimum wage, work your 12 hours a week. Well, that's about $85 a week. See, when everything was wonderful, the money was just flowing, and everybody was, everybody was I'm going to give to the church, and I'm going to bless, and I'm going to do this, because you got all that money. Now it's tightened up. And see, now was it an act of faith or just because you had excess? Now, listen, I am trying to help us all here. Because I am telling you, if you're withdrawing because it's gotten tight, then you're going to have to go back and start doing what you know, what the Bible teaches in order to survive. This is a survival guide for tough times financially. We're going to have to be givers. We're going to have to be doers of the word, not hearers only. We're going to have to be blessers. How to, now, let me say this. I was excited Wednesday night because Kevin came, came, came with no requirements. You know, and our offer sent Wednesday night for, for 43 people was $512. You know, and, we're, and the church is going to add a little bit to that to help cover some of his stuff because we're just going to do it. He came without making, making any stipulations. So we're going to bless him. Say, well, do you have it? Well, we're going to give it anyway. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, because we're going to give. You're going to give. Amen. That's how we get out of the mess. You don't get out of the mess by sending your stuff to Can uh, Cancun or the Cayman Islands. Amen. And hoarding it up and not, and not using it. Remember that parable? I went and hid what you gave me because I knew you were difficult. So God promises or tells us we're, we're, caught, we're being brought into the place of lending and not borrowing. Amen. It's time to get there. God is our source. Say, God is my source. Is my source. Say, right now, God is my source. Amen. It might be tough around me, but God is my source. Is my source. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. I believe. I believe. I'm sorry. I, I'm making a confession. Are you, I believe in six months, we're going to see a complete turnaround in the church and our finances. You know, it just, all it takes is one person to walk in and do something. All it takes is somebody to get on the Internet and send a check. I mean, just one, just one thing. <clears throat> but I believe people are coming. We've got a new anointing for a new harvest. There's a job to do. I'm telling you, God, 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 God. <laughs> Kevin was praying for me the other night, and God began to stir me back up. Now, he's saying, he said, write, 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 write the vision. But I'm going to tell you what I heard. Write, write, write the book. What book? I don't know what book, but I've got to write a book. <laughs> and I'll tell you what else. We're going to reestablish our vision today. Because we are called to be a, a church here in Greensboro and the minister to the triad. But our calling is not the same as the other churches. We are different. We have a different calling. We are to be a ministry base for going to the world. That is our calling. That is our mission. We are going to, we're going to create a base of ministry here. That is what we're called to do. Do you understand that? We need a church of a certain size so we can go to the nations. Amen. Now, listen, you understand. It's going to minister to the church. It's, we're going to minister to the church. We're going to treat it just like a church. But it's also going to have a higher calling. We're, we're a base. We're a base to the nations. I must go. I have to go. That is part of my calling. Those of you who've been with us a while know that. When I was able to go back in the 90s and go all the time, you know, I said all the time, I was going a couple times a year out of the country. Well, that cost money. But I, I was called, and we were touching nations. Our church was touching nations, training ministers. Rama has given the open door to go to any of their 160-plus Bible schools anytime we want to go. Anytime. I can pack up and call them and say, I want to go to... I want to go to 
I called John Grewal and said, I want to come and do Germany. I want to come and do Italy. I want to come and do, you know, wherever. Ken Cassett wants us in his country ministering in Estonia. He, you know, uh, there's places we have to, listen, this is, your, this is our calling as a church. So God is bringing in finances as a ministry base. Amen. Now, you're going to get ministered to. He, says, and they, they said, What's that? he, said, I, I, he said, I've got, we now have the people in the church that when I'm gone to cover everything. Right. It's settled. There's enough there I can go and do. That doesn't mean I'm going to be gone. That doesn't mean I'm leaving the church. That means I'm not going to stop pastoring. It means I'm going to, I'm, I've got to go more. And there are those in our midst that are being raised up who are going to go. I won't do all the going. We are a ministry base. What's it going to take? It's going to take money. Is anybody uptight about this? Uptight. Anybody uptight? Everybody cool with this? That's what God's telling us. That's, that's, that's what we're supposed to do. So, we're, so, you know, we're not in competition with anybody else. We're not trying to be anybody else. We have a call. And missions has been on us all along. It's always been here. We, that's why we get to Marion Zirkel and help do the shoeboxes. I, I can guarantee you we do far more for our size church than anybody else does for that size. By far. We gave 200 this year? 200 shoeboxes. And they weren't skimpy shoeboxes. We had more. They couldn't take it. That's right. The people shipping them couldn't take any more than the 200. We've gone into, I've gone to 11 different nations out of this church to minister all over the world. There's places for us to go. Everybody said places for us to go. So now, we're, we're a ministry base. <coughs> we're not competing with, with mega church over there or super church over here or this one, that one. We are called with a calling. We are a local church with a ministry base to missions to reach the nations. Listen, I consider going and teaching in Bible schools and training up people and in in indigenous people in their countries as in just as much missions as going and building a hut somewhere for somebody. Why? Because if I train the, the local in the Word of God, in the flow of the Spirit, and he can go to his own people, he knows his culture, he knows his language, he knows the economy. I've given him the things, equipped him with the spiritual things he needs to go win his country. As a matter of fact, it's more effective. It's more effective. It's not, I don't have a five-year learning curve to learn the language, learn the culture, and learn all that stuff. I can just teach him what I have. And then he can go win his people. And that's happening all over the world. That's why these Raymond Bible training centers are popping up. 163 around the world. I think in 45 or 50 nations, I've got the nation's number now. 11,000 plus students in school all the time. And that's just one avenue. That's one place we have to go. I got invitations to go other places. Marion Zirkel's been after me for 20 years to come down there. She has. Wants me to come to Guatemala. Ken Cassett wants me in Estonia. Different people ask me to come to different parts of the world. And, uh, and so we're, we're, we're going to have, listen, you can't do that when you don't have any money. That's just, that's, that's, what's the reality of it? Paul wrote to the church at Philippi and said, you sent once and again unto my necessity. He had to have money. And God's bringing people. We're gonna, listen, we're still going to be soul winners. We're still going to be reaching out to our community. It's not that we, you know, we're going to be witnesses to Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth, but we are called to the uttermost parts of the earth as a, as a ministry. It's a church and a ministry. Amen? 116 countries by video. We've got one, church, one guy in Africa who plays our services to teach his people with. And you say, well, that's, that's it. No, no, no. See, there's some things you just got to go do. There's some things you carry with you when you go. You know, Paul, Paul wrote letters, but then he went. He ministered to them with his letters, but then he went to those places and ministered. And so the church at Rome, he said, I've longed to come to you. So he had written them letters. He had sent stuff. You know, you know, he said, but I've longed to come to you. And minister in person. So, we're, so we're, we're, we're taking a prosperity adjustment. We're not going to say we can't do it. We're going to say we got enough to do it with. Amen. What are we going to do until then? We're going to keep saying it until it's there. We're going to keep speaking it until we got, the, we got the number of people that we need to do the job we need to do. 
And that means that people come in, they're going to get blessed. They're going to get, filled, they're going to get born again. They're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. They're going to get healed. They're going to be taught the Word of God. They're going to get taught the same thing you're getting taught. They're going to get taught how to live by faith and, walk, and not, or not walk in the flesh. They're going to get taught how to walk in prosperity, how to walk in health and healing, how to walk in victory, praise God. It's going to be, we're not going to change the church aspect of this at all. We're just saying that this church is going to take a step up with a vision greater than just here. We're coming to us as a ministry base. <clears throat> what are y'all doing? We're reaching the world for Jesus, praise God. We're going all over the world. We're winning, we're winning our city, but we're going to the world. We have that calling. And let me say something. It's a new anointing for a new day, a new harvest. Somebody say amen. amen. I said it's a new anointing for a new harvest. Amen. Yeah, but we did this and we had that happen. I don't care what happened. We're going to do with this. Why? Because God's going to open over his good treasure. We're going to start planning. I'm going to start planning trips. Amen. Amen. Well, one thing I'm planning is getting out of debt. This church has to get out of debt. Yeah. Now, let me say something. You do what you got to do. You heard Kevin talk about the other night how he had maxed the credit cards out because they, they, they had to do what they had to do. Right. Let me tell you something. We've done it. What? What he did. Right. We had to keep the doors open. We had to keep going. But it's time to get that junk gone. We need your faith involved in believing God with us to get rid of all that stuff. So we can do what we're called to do. It's, a, it's, it's become a burden around our neck. And we, we, had, we just had to keep, we had to go, we just had to do what we had to do. Amen. Amen. And if somebody said, well, you, you, you're tight and you went on vacation. You know what I did so I could go on vacation this year? I worked for somebody outside that used to go to our church, and I worked like a, like a dog for hours. I spent almost 100 hours doing this job on my knees, which I'm not, I'm not young like as young as I used to be. Crawling around on my knees is not that great, you know, to get money so I could take my family on vacation because it's our last vacation. And the only reason we did it, it's our last year Jesse will be, be in our household as a family. We went on a family thing together. Charged a lot of money for it, too. But it was, it, if I hadn't, I wouldn't have had the money. To go do what we needed, we had to do. I mean, so I was out doing that. I, I was substitute taught last week, almost every day except Friday. Doing what we have to do. We we do what we have to. Paul did things he had to. We're doing what we have to. Do. I'm not whining. I'm just telling you. So in case you saw on Facebook, well, well, you were on vacation. That's how I got on vacation. It wasn't because of my support from the church or from my wife's salary. As a matter of fact, she didn't get she doesn't get paid in the summer. She went three months without pay, getting paid this summer. It, like I said, it's been tough, but you know what? That's okay because we're going forward. We're going forward. We're going to walk in the power of God. But I'm telling you as a church, we need to get in faith and believing God together that this debt that's hanging around the church is gone because we use that debt to keep the church going. We did. That's what we did. You know, people left, some, certain people left and some things happened and finances went down and then the economy hit and the finances went down and we had to keep the church going. Amen. How much is it? You don't want to know. It's a bunch. But it can be gone tomorrow. I said it can be gone tomorrow. I said it can be gone tomorrow. Hello? All, all, it, takes, all it takes is the, the right people to hear from heaven. Amen. Well, how are they going to hear from heaven? We're going to get in faith. And faith is going to summon the finances. <coughs> Why? Because there's things we have to do. I'm telling you, without the, without the burden of the debt on the church right now, we, we, would, we wouldn't be in a tight spot in the church. But during that stretch where we had to do it, it got tight. And now we're having to pay that back. And you know what the banks did, don't you? What did they, what did they do? They did exactly what they're doing everybody. They did to you. They went up on the interest rates. And you call them, they won't, they, they won't take them back down. You know? Of course, you want to threaten them. Okay, well, don't, if you don't lower them, I'm just going to go bankrupt, and you're not going to get anything. But we can't do that. We've got to pay it off. So we're going to believe God. I'm not trying to get you to feel sorry. I'm trying to get you in faith with us and believe God with us to get this mess gone. See, see we, don't have, we don't have a church building payment. I can tell you what, our lease is probably higher than some church, most churches' building payment. It's, it's a high lease. You know, they keep going up and they, they won't come down. They've gone up and we, we tried it. We tried to, and then if we try to move out, it costs us so much money to move into another place. We don't have the money to upfit a Another fifty or sixty thousand dollar upfit on someplace else, right. and it costs that you know and that kind of thing. So we're, it's been kind of a catch twenty two financially, but we just got to believe God. 
We were carrying the burden of this by ourselves. My wife and I, our family, we were just carrying the burden of this by ourselves. You know, we, we can't carry it anymore. You've got to get in there with us. I don't mean you've got to go back, you've got to sell your house and give all your money to the church. I mean you've got to get in there with us in faith. Amen. You've got to get in there and believe God with us. You've got to believe God that the money comes in. Hallelujah. That I get paid. It would be nice to get paid. Hallelujah. Amen. It really would be. You know what I'm saying? How many, how many like to get paid? I do too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just, it just is true. It's just I wouldn't mind that myself. So we, we've, got, we've got to just believe God together. We can get rid of this debt. So we can go out and do what we're called to do. It's got to go. Well, how's that going to come? God's going to open a good store of his treasure. He's going to bring people in. He's going to bless you. I said he's going to bless you. He's going to cause your finances to increase. Amen. I said amen. And we're all going to get in this together. You're going to get in the faith. We don't, we don't want to be shutting the doors. I'm not going to shut. I don't have any plans of doing that. But we've got to get in faith together and believe God for the money to come in. Amen. And start believing that in six months, it's gone. Amen. I said within six months, it's gone. Amen. What's that? That's an extra 10000 a month. It's going to take that much. Plus what we need to keep from going in debt in a monthly basis. Does that make sense? We don't need to keep going in on this month while we, we catch up from last month. We need to come up and get rid of it and excess. Can y'all believe God with us on that? Can you get into faith with us on that? Amen. Well, how did we get here? The devil just kept beating the daylights out of our finances and taking people out of the church. We had, we had one year, we had two people left that took out about $45,000 a year out of the church. Just the two, the two families that left at the same time took about $45,000 a year out of the church. That's a lot of money. That's the church lease for a whole year. That hasn't come back into the church. You understand? So I'm just letting you know where we are. But we're going to get in faith. And we're going to believe, listen... They took it out, but God can send it back. Not only send it back, send it back in abundance. Send it back supernaturally. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to keep preaching the word and keep living by faith. I'm not whining. I'm telling you where we are, and I've got to have you. I've got to have my errands and my errors come up and hold my hands in faith, and let's get this job done. Let's get out of debt. Let's get out of debt. We, we, can, we can take our church back to the forefront of where it's supposed to be and get our job done if we'll get in faith together. Amen. I'm tired of having to tell people we can't do that because we don't have money. Well, we want to do this. Yeah, but, you know, it's like that costs money. We had a chance, we had a chance three months ago to buy a $25,000 television system for $7,500. I didn't have a cow to milk. There was no, there was no, we didn't have the money to go get it. Being awesome, we could have put three cameras set up here, switchers and all that kind of stuff, done a high-end professional television program. Those chances don't come along all the time. There was no money to do it. I'm tired of having to say that. I don't want to say that. Amen? I want to be able to say, okay, let's go do it. Now, we're going to have to get out of debt to get there. We're going to have to believe God opens the windows of, his, of heaven and pour, takes out and blesses us out of his good treasure. Can you say amen? He's going to bless the fruit of our hand. Amen? And we're going to lend and not borrow. We're going to be in a place. I want to be in a place where, where uh, somebody calls up, and I, call, and I got 25 ministers I oversee, and I call them up and they say, yeah, we're struggling, we're not going to. And me saying, yeah, look, I, we're, we're, we understand what you're going through. Instead of having to say, we understand what you're going through, brother, what you need right now? I'd love to just be able to write them a check. I'd love to have money sitting in the bank and say, you know what? Look, you know, we're just going to send you, we're just going to, look, we're going to bless your church right now and send them some money. I want to be in that place. See, that's why the devil fights so hard, because he knows I would. Right. He knows I would. He's resisting us. Well, let's fight back. Let's fight back in faith. Amen? Amen? <coughs> let's fight back as a congregation. Let's fight back and say, no, nah, that's enough. Right. Amen? You're, you're, I, don't need to be, I don't need to be bombarded with this all the time as the pastor. I need to be doing other things. So I need your help in faith in the realm of faith. I need to look, see every week and watch the numbers go up. Hallelujah. Oh, look at that faith working. People believe in God. People believe in God. Amen. Why does Satan attack people who have money in churches? So he can shut the church down. 
His, his ultimate goal is to shut churches down, close their doors. We have a call. We have a mission. We're going to fulfill our mission and call. Y'all well, look at me kind of funny this morning. I, I, I don't want you walking out here feeling sorry for me. I want you walking out here saying, let's, 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 jump, let's join to the task. Let's get in faith. Let's use our words to speak and declare and believe God. I don't, hey, amen. Let's say that the Faith and Victory Church has more than enough. That Faith and Victory Church is out of debt in six months. That Faith and Victory Church has a flow of finances so they can do our job, praise God. That our mission to be a base of ministry to the world is, is solid and sound. And that we're out of debt and we've got money in the bank to do what we need to do with. Amen. 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 That the church is prospering. Pastor is blessed. Yes, please, please speak blessing over me. Amen. Amen. I want to bring my wife home from work. Amen. She's not working because it's, it's the gl most glorious thing in the world she's ever done. Hallelujah. I want to bring her home. Not home. She, she'd be back at the church. And some of you wonder why some of the things haven't been getting done all the time? Because I'm not an administrator. You know who the administrator is? Did y'all figure that out yet? My wife. She's the one that runs all that stuff. She's been working. And so some people say, well, you're, you're letting stuff fall through the cracks. Well, I preach good. You know what I'm saying? I preach good. I administrate lousy. You can give me all the techniques, all the tools, all the, everything you can do, and I still administrate lousy. Why? It's not my call. What's your call? I preach good. I flow in the Holy Ghost. Amen? I preach and flow in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, but we need guidelines for this. Uh, I preach good and flow in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why I got a wife. Okay, anyway. We're, believe, we're coming out of debt. Everybody say, we stand up. We, we today, today, a church body, church body receive, our call. receive our call. We decree, we decree that we're coming out of debt. Out of debt. Six, months, Six months, the church is out of debt. Out of debt. In fa sound financial shape. Sound financial shape. Let me say this. There is a building in Greensboro for sale right now that if we were in a different financial position, we could go buy. It wouldn't cost us about another $1,500 a month to, uh, than our lease to own our own building right now. If we were in a different financial... Uh, well, let's get there. It's been sitting there. Let's get there. Let's go get us a building. Amen? Let's get to where there's money in our bank and we're going over there and we're buying the building and it's our place. We've got our own place. Amen. And we're putting money into our own building instead of giving money to this business park. And, you know, this, they've been gracious. I have nothing bad to say about it. They've been gracious to us during this difficult time because we're behind. We're, we're three months behind. And they're just letting us go. We, we give them this. As soon as we get some money, we go give it to them. You know, we keep kept trying to keep caught up. But they're, they're being gracious, very gracious to us. Amen. Amen. So I know y'all didn't know that, and I've been trying to, you know, not say anything, but, you know, I have to, the, the church has to know where we are so you can get in faith with us. You've got to get in faith with us. Amen. Hallelujah. But they've been, so I, can, I have nothing bad to say about them. They've been good to us and extremely gracious to us. And so, but it's, it, we, we get in a different financial position, six months, and put money in the bank. We can go get our own building. It's already a church. All we have to do is walk in. Take the name off the sign, put ours up there. Say hallelujah, where well, here we are. I mean, that's all we have to do is just take, go there, pop off the sign. Even if we couldn't even buy a, a plastic one to fill in, just get a thing and just wrap over it and say, Faith and Victory Church. That's all we got to do. Put our chairs in there and go for it. Amen. Well, how many want get, to get to where we're, listen, you, you can't get caught up with the fact you don't have enough. We all got to start talking prosperity. God's opening up his good treasure to us. And he's blessing us. And we start speaking faith, amen, over our finances, over the church finances. That we're all blessed. So this, this year, this year, we decree. Come on, we decree. <coughs> that in six months, this church is out of debt. This church has money in the bank in excess. Now, however, God has to do it. He does it. Ours is not the how. 
He is the way. And we're just going to believe. Hallelujah. We hold pastor's hands up in faith. We believe there's a return and a restoration of finances in Jesus' name. Blessings come. Overflowing blessings. We call it in now. Finances. We summon you to the vision of this church. A church that's debt free and walking in excess so that we can be a base of ministry to the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I'll be totally honest with you this morning. I had no, I came this morning planning on teaching on healing. And I was sitting out there and I just couldn't, I'm sitting there going, I can't preach on that. The Lord said prosperity. And then I was going to preach on prosperity. I had no intention of saying anything I said about this church, the status or anything. That was not, that wasn't even on my mind when I, oh, I wasn't even thinking about it when I came in this morning. It wasn't like it was like a, oh God, I was up all night thinking about how bad it was. I wasn't even thinking about it. But there are times we have to let people know what's going on so they can get with us. So they can get in faith with us. This is your church. This is your calling. This is what we're here for. We're based to the nations. We're going to get the job done. But I can't do it by myself. I thank you for your faith support. Thank you for getting involved in faith and believing God with us, standing with us, and daily calling for the destruction of the debt in this ministry so we can walk in blessing and prosperity and do what we're called to do. Everybody said, Shandai. Somebody say, Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you, you walk by faith. When God speaks to you, you do what God tells you to do. When God tells you to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't need to have fundraiser offerings and that kind of stuff. You just, if God speaks to you or, or God brings somebody else in, however he brings it, that's fine. I'm not going to pressure anybody. We're not going to show up at your house saying, we need to know how much you can give sacrificially. I want you to give, how much, well, with everything you do, everything you do, I want you to do it by faith. So if God speaks to you and you respond to God by faith, praise God. If he don't speak to you and you don't have anything in your heart, praise God. God's going to get it done because we're going to stand in faith together and believe God. Can you say amen? amen. All right.